Hi, this is Anthony, and in this episode of Battery Experts with Anton Parr, we will discuss some physical parameters of electrolyte solutions and their importance during battery manufacturing. Electrolytes are an integral part of a battery. They transfer ions between electrodes, causing the battery to charge and discharge. Besides the chemical composition of the electrolytes, physical parameters such as density, viscosity, and flammability, or flashpoint, are important to accurately measure, as they will directly affect the quality, performance, and safety of the battery. Let's start with density. Density measurement of an electrolyte solution is a quick, easy, and very reliable way to ensure that the composition corresponds to the specifications needed. Density measurement is also a great QC tool during electrolyte formulation preparation. You can do a quick density check with a portable density meter, and for a more accurate measurement, a benchtop instrument is used. Ideally, a fully automated instrument equipped with an auto sampler and monitoring multiple parameters simultaneously, such as pH, viscosity, and refractive index if needed, would be the go-to system for quality control during electrolyte R&D and QC. In this example, using an auto sampler to handle a larger number of samples, we are measuring the density of dimethyl carbonate-based electrolyte solution. The samples are commonly measured at a precisely controlled temperature of 21 degrees C. However, analysis in the range between 0 and 100 degrees C are possible. To avoid a loss of volatile components as a result of evaporation, filling the sealed vials and pressurized filling are featured by the system as well. The ideal settings can easily be configured. Set up a method name, set up the temperature, which is typically 20 degrees C for electrolyte analysis, define the desired precision of measurement between precise and ultra-fast, save and set as favorite if this is an often used method. Now, insert the sample in a specific position in the sample rack, then type its name and position. Measurement time will depend on the number of parameters measured and the precision level required. For a precise measurement and for monitoring density and refractive index, measurement time is about four minutes. After the analysis, the system will undergo steps of cleaning with different solutions, then drying. Once the analysis is done, export data via AP Connect, LIMS, USB, or printer to allow storage or further processing of the generated data. Let's now take a look at the viscosity of electrolyte solutions. In the development of new electrolytes, viscosity measurements are typically performed over a wide temperature range or at a single temperature. Viscosity is an important indicator of the degree of wettability of the electrodes by the electrolyte, as this will have an effect on the ion transport and consequently the charge and discharge rate over a specific temperature range. Using a rolling ball viscometer with a cooling option, the dynamic viscosity of an electrolyte solution is measured. It is important to remember that battery electrolyte solutions can be very corrosive, and the reaction of electrolytes with water can form hydrofluoric acid or HF, which is extremely hazardous and corrosive. This is why it is important to select a system that is well suited for this application. If the electrolyte chemically attacks glass, the system should be equipped with high chemical resistant PCTFE capillaries. In practice, while automatic filling is possible, it is not recommended when working at sub-zero temperatures to avoid temperature gradients. Instead, manual filling is recommended in this case. Under a fume hood, attach the manual filling adapter to the capillary, put in a gold-coated steel ball and this will be the rolling ball used for viscosity measurement. Attach the filling and cleaning adapter on the side of the capillary. Fill in the electrolyte solutions with a syringe and make sure to use a syringe material that is chemically resistant to the electrolyte solution. Remove the filling and cleaning adapter and plug the capillary on both sides. Check whether the gold-coated ball is rolling freely and that there are no air bubbles inside the capillary. In the capillary administration, select the ball type, which is gold for these samples. 
select the type of capillary, which is PCTFE for these samples. Enter the serial number of the capillary. Select the filling mode, which is manual in this case. And then insert the capillary in the capillary block. If performing measurements below 5 degrees C, the capillary block needs to be connected to a circulating liquid cooler. Next step is the capillary adjustment. The adjustment can be a single point adjustment, where we would use one single angle, a standard adjustment, which adjusts angle between 20 degrees and 70 degrees in 10 degree steps, or an extended adjustment, where the user can select at least three different angles of their choice. When doing temperature scans, a standard adjustment is recommended to allow high flexibility in selecting measuring angles. After configuring the method, the measurement can be started. At the end of the analysis, the data will be summarized in a table and plotted in a graph. Lastly, we will look at the flashpoint of electrolyte solutions. For the safety evaluation of a battery, the flammability of electrolyte solutions should be considered because of the flammable solutions used for electrolytes formulation. It is worth mentioning that the addition of electrolyte salts to the solvents used does not change the flash point significantly, which means it can be approximated that the flash point of the solvent or solvent mixtures without electrolyte salt lies within the experimental uncertainties. In this example, using an able closed cup flash point tester, we will measure the flash point of DMF which is a commonly used solvent for electrolytes. For this, fill up the sample cup with the DMF solution, insert the cup in the instrument, type in the sample name and select the standard method to use, type in the expected flash point, which is 58 degrees C in this case, and start the measurement. Now the measuring head will be lowered and the measurement will start. The igniter will dip into the sample cup in intervals that are given by the standard used, trying to ignite the gas phase above the sample. When the flash point is determined, it will be displayed on the touchscreen of the instrument. So, we saw how accurately measuring the physical parameters of density, viscosity, and flash point of electrolyte solutions can provide valuable information directly impacting the quality and safety of these solutions during battery manufacturing. Thank you.